Hello everybody and welcome back to Wilderness Adventures UK. Right, today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of an overnight camp over in Bluegate. I have done a couple before but I've never filmed them in their entirety and there's just little segments sat at home on my hard drive that I can't really do much with because they're not a complete video. But uh, today, yeah, I've, I've got a new to me tent and I've got some bits of gear that I'm going to be using in the video. Uh, the tent I'll talk about a little bit. The three specific bits of gear that I brought with me I've been sent by a company. So what I'm going to do is I am going to be using them in the video but I'm going to do uh, three standalone videos whilst I'm here over the next day. Um, just describing what they are, describing in situations where I'd use them. Uh, not affiliated with said company, um, just in case I forget to say it in those videos. And they're not necessarily going to be reviews uh, because I've just got the items. This is the first time they've left my house. So um, yeah, I cannot confirm or deny whether they're going to stand the test of time or anything like that. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. Right everybody, this is the area I'm going to be setting up the tent in. So I just need to get rid of some of these nettles, uh, obviously for easy use. And there's a lot of ground litter. So I've got a trusty rake just over here. Obviously we're in Bluegate Wood, so we have a few tools in here. Uh, and I'm just going to clear up this area and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm setting up the tent. Well, I've quickly cleared out the area, I just dragged all the debris out to the edges and this is going to be the area just here where I'm going to bed down for the night. Uh, tent I'm using today is the Dutch Army canvas two-man tent. Now I bought this probably about four months ago off a, a guy you might know, Ginger Bushcraft or Ginger Out and About as he's known now, Mike. He held on to this for me uh, for quite a while because I bought it off him back end of last year and he was meant to be bringing it to, to Edale but obviously with uh, the current situation that's going on in the world, Edale was cancelled so um, yeah I arranged my Hermes to go and pick it up from his house. Uh, second time I'm going to be using it today, I did use it a couple of weeks ago when we did have another camp out in here. Um, but yeah I know what I'm doing, I know how to set it up so I'm going to quickly set it up off camera and I'll bring you back and I'll show you just how it goes up basically. Yeah, it's so easy to set up, it takes no longer than sort of five minutes. Uh, you start off by putting four pegs out in each corner that's attached to the ground sheet. I've used some quite heavy duty pegs for this just to go into the soft ground here. Uh, you then put in these poles just here. There's a pole on the front and the back, or the back and the front, uh, and it just flat on the ground and it goes up and tucks under the flap just here. And then you use a guy line just to give you your tautness across the front and back. So I've got one peg going down at the front and at the back I've just got it lashed to the tree. And then finally you've got a, a guy line on all four corners just to give it its, its sloping roof. Um, now these are, these have rather quite a bad reputation in the rain. Um, they've got a few gaps at either sides of the zips and down the front of the zip. So if you're using these tents in the rain it is highly recommended you put a tarp or some sort of basher just over the top of them to stop you waking up in a pool of water. Um, I've stayed out in it before, it was dry, it's given good forecast for the next uh, 48 hours so I don't think I'm going to need a bash or anything so I'm just going to use it El Fresco just like you see it here. So all that's left to do is set up my sleep system. Tonight I'm going to be on the Thermarest Prolite Apex. It's only a little thin um, self-inflating mat. does great to be fair. Um, not going to be good if you're of a bigger stature but with me only being three stone wet through. Um, yeah this suits me perfect. Uh, I can use it in my hammock and I can actually slide this in my sleeping bag and stops it slipping about everywhere. Uh, my sleeping bag is a Softy Elite 3. I use a free seat season sleeping bag. Uh, it does me fine. In the colder months or if I'm camping while it's colder I've got a, a really good uh, sleeping bag liner that goes inside it that just adds about 5 degrees. So it takes this from like sort of fr uh, I think it's 0 degrees. This is rated to, to like minus 5 or something um, which is more than enough for the UK. So, oh I have got an inflatable a little crap eBay inflatable pillow as well um, that I just slip inside the hood of the of the sleeping bag to stop it going everywhere. Don't really rate these. If anybody's got any suggestions to a better camp pillow, please leave it in the comments below. There's something interesting's going on, so I thought I'd quickly bring you back just to show you. I've not mentioned yet, but I'm here with Leon and Leon's son Max. And Leon is on with something good. Mm. What are you doing, Leon? I'm making some nice pork steaks. Check people. these out, guys. And it's hot. Real hot. I'm not going to get in too close, but they look good. He's positively spoiling himself. I am on tonight some beef stroganoff. Mmm, MRE style, British MRE, and it went out of date in uh, 24th of the 10th, 2015. So wish me luck. I have brought some wet wipes just in case. 
folks, dinner is on. Right, the beauty about MREs, and indeed all camp food, is you just fold it up and you stick it in some water. And then you let the water do the thing when it's heating up. It's re nice and easy, which we like easy. Uh, yeah, I just really, being a bit lazy this weekend, I've not bought any food in and I've, I've just, just come out for a chill, really. We're going to have a mess with the tunnel that's behind me, just there. We're going to try and strap it up in the trees and lift it off the ground a little bit just to give us a bit more coverage. Um, so I've got some ratchet straps and we're just going to have a mess about with that. As well as, like I mentioned in the intro, I've got a few little bits off a of company to, to show you um, and, and see what they can do, see if they see if they work well. Right, everybody, the stroganoff is done. I've tipped the rice in there. Let's see if we can get you a close-up. That's what she looks like, piping hot. There's a big mushroom on this side, look. Beef stroganoff, I've tipped my rice in there. I've tipped a load of Tabasco hot sauce in there and I'm going to get it in me. This is me. This is my tea. It's around sort of coming up to six o'clock now. So I'm absolutely ravenous. Didn't eat a proper meal yesterday. I just snacked all day. So uh, yeah, first proper meal in probably 36 hours to be fair. I'm going to get this in me and then I'll bring you back when we're messing about with that tunnel. All right guys. So everybody, the plan is the connector tunnel, which is just there. We've just started taking it down. We're going to try and strap up into the tree so we've got a big rectangle above us and just a bit of a communal area. The ground we're on at the moment is really quite flat and, and, and a really good ground dwelling area. Um, but we've taken up half the space with the tunnel. So what we want to do is we want to suspend the tunnel about 12 foot up in the air. Then we'll have a communal, communal area for us to, to sit under at night time if it's bad weather. But also somewhere to put the entrance of your tent. So like me in the, um, in the swimming pool tent over there. Um, I could actually put it under and uh, when it's not raining, not have to worry about a tarp, hence saving on time and stuff and, and still being able to camp in bad weather. Ruto people, we're getting there. Uh, we still need to kind of ratchet it back a little bit to get it a little bit higher up. But the problem we had is the tree we wanted to go to is uh, that one just there and he's really rotten and not, not too well to be fair. So we've had to go back a little bit further. So now we've just got this corner left to do here. I think we're going to go to this big fat beach here. And um, yeah, then we'll get it all taut tautened down and it is about 10 foot. We've, we've, we've ratcheted it up 12 foot, but obviously it's got a little bit of a drop and a little bit of a sag. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a look in a minute. We'll bring you back when we've finished faffing. Right, we're just putting finishing touches to market stall. Here we are, I'm under it. Not sure I'm going to be able to give you the full benefit. But uh, yeah, we put a ratchet strap down the middle to give it a bit of a pitch. Let's see if I can get it. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it for you. But there's a just a ratchet strap there, a red one. Hoping you can see that. It's giving it a bit of a pitch in the middle. So obviously all rain can run off it. And we've got all four corners ratcheted to the trees. It's going to take a lot. You could use it as a trampoline to be fair. That's not going to go. Not going to go nowhere, mate. Yeah, our Leon's got camera now, so I'll show you full length of it. You stand at one end bar, mate, and I'll stand at the other. Can you still see me down there? Only just, Maurice. It's a fair old, fair old size. And because we've got the line for the pitch, we've got somewhere to hang the lights as well. We could do with bringing a little fireplace in here now and just having the fireplace under a roof. It's a market stall, isn't it? That? Proper good. Proper good. My idea kind of worked. Trim them bits off, aren't you? They're going to get... Yeah, I mean, we'll sort them out. We'll sort them out. We'll, um... To be fair, I'll probably bring something really sharp and trim them off. I'll trim them off. We don't, we don't really need them. Not unless we get some sides with Velcro and we can Velcro some walls on it, which is another idea we can tell you with at a later date, I suppose. Maybe. Right, guys, so as you can probably tell by the blackness behind me, much later on now, uh, we are all fed, we're all watered, we're uh, about three or four beers or cans or whatever in. Uh, we're just chilling and watching the fire. Um, yeah, going to bed down in the next couple of hours, I expect. Just going to catch up on some gossip and some some chatter now, just off camera. And uh, Yeah, I'll fetch you back in the morning when uh, we hopefully make it through the night, when all the creepy crawlies and boogeyman comes out to get us. Anyway, guys, have a good night. I hope you're all well, and I'll see you in the morning. morning everybody just literally out of my pit it's just coming up to 10 o'clock that was a monster lion but i did have a bit of a rough night last night 
Right, I'll take you over here because I can smell something. Smell something important when you're camping. Check this out. What doing, Leon? Oh, making breakfast, my boy. Oh, look at that. I'm excited about ah, excited to wake up to that. Yeah, I find, I don't know about you guys, but I find when I um, go out camping, it takes me a couple of nights to get used to the sounds and the noises. Now, just over here, let's see if we can see it. There's a tree that knocks against another tree right at the top. I can't see it, but so, somewhere up here, you'll have to take my word for it, there's a tree that knocks against another tree. And all night I thought somebody was trying to break into the Land Rover, so I actually got up and got dressed, because obviously I've mentioned before, I don't sleep in my clothes. Um, just sleep in my boxer shorts. I got up and I ran over to check the cars twice, before I realised, before something clicked, it's some tr trees knocking together. But yeah, what an idiot. But uh, yeah, bit of a rough night. Uh, I woke up at first light as well, which just so happened to be at two minutes past four. I could hear all the birds chirping. But it does, it takes you a couple of days to adjust to the sounds and stuff and proper relax. So a little while after breakfast now and uh, we're all just cracking on. Uh, Max is just packing up his tent over there. Max isn't going to stay, but me and Leon have decided to stay an extra night. Uh, all I'm doing just to keep you in the loop is that I'm finding old bits of stuff that's been dumped in here, wood. And I'm putting it on the fire, just burning it, just to keep busy really. Um, picking up old scraps, old bits of deadfall and stuff, and just chucking it on the fire. Just keep it going, keep clearing up. Um, quiet stuff, in inverted commas. I'm not, I'm not bringing chainsaw out and I'm not going to bring grinder out because I, we're still kind of locked down. Um, I mean, we still are locked down, but yeah, it's kind of locked down. So uh, yeah, I don't want to draw too much attention to us being here. But uh, yeah, that's what we're doing at the moment. We're going to run Max home in a minute and um, go pick up some more provisions because obviously we only budgeted food wise for one night so we're pretty much out, well Leon's out of food, I've got a couple of ration packs but I think we're going to go and get some proper food um, and then we'll come back and continue oh look how beautiful it is here we'll continue making a few videos I think um, as I say I've got three videos to make, three different items just a quick ten minute slot in each video just telling you a little bit about the item and places where I'd use it and how I'd use it and in certain circumstances I will be using it. Just got back to the woods uh, about 20 minutes ago. Uh, both Leon and I popped off home, A to use the facilities, but B to pick up a load of uh, fresh supplies. We're out of beers, we're out of food. We only, we only, as I mentioned before, we only kind of brought stuff for one night, expecting it to be a one-nighter. So uh, since I've been back, I've been running about with me log carrier. Can you see that there? It's just a folding piece of canvas really that you pop all your logs in. And uh, I've started building a pile of wood for the night. I hope you can see that. Holding the camera a bit skew with. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue picking up logs. Uh, just deadfall really. Stuff that's already on the ground. We've had gorgeous weather in the UK for the past sort of two weeks with minimal showers so all the wood on the floor should be dry. Um, it's all the bigger bits really. Just just picking it up. Leaving a lot on the floor obviously so, so all the little creatures have got somewhere to live. Wood louse, uh, ants and such have got stuff they can be uh, turning into compost. But all the bigger stuff, the stuff that can be burnt, we'll just get off the ground and, and burn it. Um, there is a wood, another woodland full of wood that the farmer wants me to go and clear up. But uh, I've been putting it off because I don't want to go into the woods using a chainsaw. Um, basically on my own. Leon's splintered back at work. So uh, yeah, it'd mean me going into the woods on my own with a chainsaw. And if anything, heaven forbid, did happen. Um, yeah, I'd be on my own bleeding out. So, so yeah, I just wanted a bit of company if I'm going to go swinging a chainsaw in a, in a set of woods. So there's plenty of wood to bring back into this wood. So everything I'm using will kind of be replaced and replenished with uh, with some huge stuff that we've got coming. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to crack on doing a bit more admin ready for the night. I mean, we don't need firewood. Um, it, it's not for warmth. It's mainly for cooking our food and uh, just a bit of comfort. Obviously, any of you who camp know that when you light that fire it gives you that warmth hypothetically speaking um that that safety barrier because you've got not that we've got bears or anything in the uk but it does it just makes you feel at home really um you'll all know what i'm talking about when you do this um this one's just about to burn out so i'll stoke it back up we're just trying to keep it going just burning a load of um debris really that's on the floor trying to make the woods a little bit of a nicer place right everybody just brought you back quickly 
just finished filming a series of uh, videos for a company called Verusta Laker. Um, they sent me three items to check out. There's going to be separate videos for that. I think I've mentioned it already in this video, but I'm just mentioning it again just to make you aware. But by God, that thing's impressive. Um, I don't want to make this into a, into an advertising video for Verusta Laker because this is a camping video. But Christ, go please go and watch the video of this knife. I am so. We just finished finished rolling just then, and Leon turned around to me and he said, "When you cut that paper, I didn't think it was going to go through after smashing it through that wood and everything." And to be fair, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was completely off the cuff, filmed straight away. And you all know this is this is an OBS channel. I show it as it is. If this was crap, I'd tell you, don't get this. Don't waste your money on it. But by Christ, I was impressed with that. Um, yeah, I'm going to be using that a lot more in the woods, I think. Um, and probably for the rest of this video, I'm going to be swinging it about. I haven't really shown it yet because I didn't want this video to run as well as them videos because it just looked like a massive advertising campaign. And that's not what I'm about. As I say, I'm not affiliated with Verusta Laker. Um, there's no discount codes. There's no affiliation. They sent me these three items for free just to show off and kind of describe how I'd use them and um, potentially use them in the future on the channel, which I'm forever grateful for, I really am. Um, I, I like it when, when companies um, recognise the work I'm trying to do on this channel and uh, just, just trying to bring people just like you sat there watching this, just honest um, opinions. They're not reviews because you know, I've only had this knife for two weeks and this is the first time it's left the house. Um, so it's not a review. Uh, in two years time, ask me how I'm getting on with this knife and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, oh I snapped it, or oh, I broke it, or oh, it snapped, or, or whatever, or oh, I still got it, it's going strong, whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah, that's what I try and do on this channel. Um, I think we're just going to crack open our first beers of the day um, and probably, look at that as if by magic, thank you Leon. Oh, look at that, he's got the good stuff. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to crack on, probably collect a bit more wood and just settle in for the rest of the night. Um, hopefully, what's the space shuttle called? Dragon? Yeah, Elon Musk. Be... Elon Musk's Dragon shuttle is going to be uh, taken off tonight if the wind dies down a little bit. Um, so we're going to get out into the field with Leon's big camera and try and catch it flying over. Apparently 15 minutes after it takes off from down south, um, we should be able to see it flying over Lancashire. So we're going to try and catch it later on today, which is another reason why we've kind of decided to stay out. But uh, yeah, fire's still going down here. We keep topping it up. Uh, we've got loads of wood over there that I collected before, loads of wood here. Uh, our little kitchen setup is just there. Leon's tent just over there. And my tent over there, I'm not sure you're going to be able to make it out because it's, it's DPM, isn't it? So it's, uh, yeah. Melted in like a predator. <laughs> it is, it's, like, it's like, like that technology predator uses on his suits to bloody meld in. You can't see it unless you really look for it. <laughs> but yeah, that's the score. I hope you're enjoying the video. There'll be a little bit more. Oh, we got a little visitor too. I don't think he's made an appearance just yet. Little Finnegan is sat there in his bed being a really good lad. There he is. Max has gone home, Leon's son. Um, only wanted to come for the one night, which is understandable. He's got games to be played. Much like my son. And uh, we've replaced Max for Finn. It's a good trade-off to be fair. <laughs> Yeah, a lot quieter. Although it was quite funny with, with, uh, with Max here last night. He'll have to come again. But yeah guys, we'll crack on and I'll fetch you back a little bit later when we've got some cooking going on. Bring you back for a bit of an update. Uh, much later in the day, sun is going down just there. You can see it just poking through the tree. Sorry, looking at the screen then. Um, right, so just before I came out to, uh, to Bluegate Woods for our camp, I put up my swag foolishly for sale. Not really thinking that I'm going to be camping for the next for, for the next few days, or well, for the next day initially. Um, thought it'd take a lot longer to sell, but I had one of the Rat Pack lads, Dave. Sound, sound, sound lad, come over um, from his neck of the woods, which is just down the road from me. And uh, yeah, we did a bit of a bit of a tidy deal. He's taken the swag away, and he's left me with a Dutch Army hoop bivy down here on the floor. Don't know if you can see that. So what I'm going to quickly do, I'm not going to film this because I'm rushing because the sun's going down. I'm going to take down the Dutch army tent and I'm going to sleep in the Dutch hoop bivvy tonight. Um, yeah, really excited because I've been after a hoop, uh, Dutch hoop bivvy for ages. It's the extra large one as well. So the bags of room in there for me because I'm only about three stone wet through. Uh, Leon's just done with cooking uh, tea. Yeah. Turns, a bit of chicken cooking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to quickly pull my socks up. 
tell them we've watched them two guys in that rocket, then you know what we're doing. Oh yeah, we've just watched the two guys in uh, the Dragon rocket just take off and uh, launch out off into outer space, head into the space station. Uh, all very, very good, very entertaining while we're in the woods. But yeah, plan is quickly rip this down, put that in its place because I like this spot. It's nice and cosy, it's under some trees. Um, I like it over here. Um, and I'll fetch you back as soon as I've set it up. Uh, I've been rushing around like a blue ass fly. Sun is all but gone. You can possibly see it through the trees just over there on the bottom of the horizon. Uh, this is where my Dutch army tent was. Just here on the floor. Left no trace, there's no mess. Taken all my pegs with me. Uh, I have got rid of a little bit of deadfall, obviously. Scraped it to the sides. But with it being our permission, that isn't going to be a problem. Um, if I was in a proper... Um, leave no trace mode, or in, you know, in a permission I didn't have, um, I'd probably push a load of leaf litter and twigs back over there. Right, I have relocated because as Darren quite rightfully messaged me yesterday, he says watch out for green flies under that tree. As soon as you brush up against it you'll be covered and he was right because as I was taking that down I brushed up against the tree covered in green flies. So I decided to move away from the flies and uh, I've set up under our market stall. So here's our market stall, you can see it just above me just there, sorry looking at the camera just dead quick to make sure it was in shot. And down on the floor, I'll stand behind the camera again, is the Dutch Hoop bivvy. My sleep system is in there, my pad, my sleeping bag. I can't fit much more in there, but that's it. And that's where I'm going to be bedding down tonight. To be very, very honest with you, I'm very sceptical of these because it's too much like a coffin. I'm going to be getting in that and it's going to be like being buried alive. But I'm going to attempt it tonight and uh, yeah, if I were ever, ever doing any low-key stealth camps, stealth camps, places we're not meant to be, this is going to be the preferred sleep system because you'll just put it in the nettles, you'll put it in the undergrowth and nobody will ever see you and nobody will know you're there. So it's absolutely perfect for low-key camping. Right guys, uh, Leon's finished cooking the chicken as I showed you just before. So I'm just going to go and get some chicken, have a cider and settle down for the night. Right, so we're just sat here chatting at night time thinking about how we can better our little camp situation. And uh, if you go back to the walk round Bluegate Woods that I did, uh, I talk about the squares. Now we're both camped in one of the squares just over there. You can probably make out on the big screen where we're camped. You can probably pick up on Leon's tent. But over here, there's another square next to the ruin. Now the problem with this square as we found out the last time, last couple of times we've camped here, is um, your pegs for your tents and such can only go in about oh, probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches into the soil. There's something hard underneath the top layer of soil. So um, what we're thinking of doing is, is making that square a communal area. Um, but what we might do is we might move the fire into the centre of that square over there and make the fire pit a little bit bigger. And that'll be where everybody sits when we, when we come and when we, when we relax. Yeah, let us know. Let us know what you think. I mean, um, it's only a, a, a very early idea at the moment. We've got a lot more area to play, play with in here. Well, guys, not long been up and about. Uh, slept in a crisp packet last night and it was, a, it was an experience. I'm not going to say it was a good one or a bad one because it's the first time I've ever tried to sleep in a bivvy. Um, when I actually got out, I think I got about five hours solid sleep. So it's not too bad, a bit groggy this morning to be fair. Uh, coffee's on, we're just trying to burn the fire down to embers so we can start breakfast. And then we're gonna um, take camp down, pack away all our stuff, and then maybe look at improving camp a little bit, moving the campfire, etc. But we we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, something's been in camp overnight and uh, ate a pack of our six rolls. We had six, six uh, wholemeal bread rolls. And uh, young Finnegan this morning was having his, his wander around the perimeter, making sure everything was all right. And uh, yeah, found an empty packet. So some things have uh, been on the ground and ate all our bread rolls. We're not sure whether it was rats or maybe the ducks. I don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the plan this morning. We've, we've, Leon's just made a coffee. Thanks to Leon again. Always looking after me when we're out and about that one. And uh, yeah, we'll get coffee in us, get our breakfast. We're going to have some uh, some bacon, bacon cheeseburgers with beans for breakfast, which is, uh, yeah, good. We're just trying to get rid of the stuff we didn't eat last night, basically. Uh, but yeah, see if we can move this fireplace and build it a little bit bigger just over there, just over to the back. And then uh, head back to the rat race. 
quickly brought you back because we didn't notice what time it was. We're rapidly coming up to midday today and we want to sort of be out of here by about one o'clock. So whilst Leon, Leon was cooking breakfast just before, I started moving and uh, doing what I was talking about last night on camera, which was making the new communal area. So this is the square behind me now that I was talking about. And you'll notice just to my right here, there's a big slab. Big slab was just over in the ground over there. So I dug it out, it was proper back breaking work and I moved it to here. It's about four inch thick. It's a, it's a, it's a good thickness that. I did try sinking it into the ground, but the tree, the, the tree root system is so shallow here, I couldn't get down far enough. So what I'm planning to do is build up a couple of bricks put a bit of topsoil or clay over the top to fill in all the gaps so no embers can fall down and scorch the ground um, and then build the bricks up a little bit using gaps between the bricks so air can come in and obviously keep the fire going get oxygen to the fire and all that um, and then we'll um, work on the area behind me making it into a better area for ground dwelling all this area right over to where the, the Dutch army tent was underneath the trees just over there um, trim this willow tree back a little bit because there's a load of dead branches on it. These branches going up, hardly any life on them. Um, there's a load of dead branches over there towards the hedgerow that need trimming back, just cutting back just so we free up some more space. It'll give us a bit more room for, for hammocks going up and whatnot just in this area. So as for our camp for this weekend, it's over. It's been a marvellous time. Thank you to Leon as always for coming out, keeping me company, looking after me, doing my cooking for me this week. He's proper spoiled me. It's been bloody lovely. Um, yeah, I'll be back out next weekend from Friday to maybe Sunday, Monday next weekend. So there will be another video of Bluegate Woods coming up very, very soon. Got a couple of friends coming over because um, it's one of their birthdays. So we're going we're gonna to spend the weekend camping in the woods. Right, guys, for now, I'm going to sign out for this weekend. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you if you stayed to the very, very end. Um, if you're not subscribed, I don't usually do this because I don't like it to be fair, but if you're not subscribed, please subscribe because I have noticed in the analytics that over sort of 60% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Um, every subscription does count. Um, obviously, the more subscribers I've got, the more people who watch my videos, the more YouTube pushes my videos to the top of the list when people are searching. So if you'd be so kind to subscribe, maybe share my videos, maybe share your favourite video, it doesn't have to be this one. Um, it'd be greatly, greatly appreciated on my behalf. Obviously, um, yeah, we're going through some weird stuff in the world at the moment and I've not worked for over 12 weeks. So the pot is running very, very dry. Hence, I'm staying very local and I'm not, I'm not venturing out a little bit further and I'm not doing anything too expensive. But yeah, I'd really, really appreciate your support in this troubled time. Um, anyway, guys, again, I'll sign off for today. Uh, hopefully see you in a video very, very soon. You all look after yourselves.